Okay guys, so what we're going to do now is we're going to look at resources. So um, what we're going to have is, if I just demonstrate to you here, um, we've got some resources. So these little flowers over here, I'm going to need to pick those up to use them as resources. Um, but you could do this obviously for any model of any resource that you wanted to use it for. So um, you see when I approach the resource, it says push E to collect on the widget. And of course, when I push E, it will destroy that. And um, you can see in the top left, um, it's printing a variable number. So it's storing those um, as a resource, which you can tie into like an inventory, or you could just have it um, display on a, on a HUD, whatever you wanted to do with that. Okay, so how we did it. Um, so I've got a pickups folder here. Um, I'll delete these and we'll start from scratch so I can go through how we've done it. Let's just get rid of those. Um, okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is um, have a, a key mapped to your kind of interactive uh, button. So I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to go to project settings and I'm going to come down to inputs. Now you'll see that I already have one here because I set that up already. So I could just remove that action mapping and you'll, if you're just going from default, you'll probably just have these. Um, if you're starting with a template, if you're not, you might have nothing. But what I'm going to do is add a new action mapping. I'm going to name it interact. And then you just obviously whatever you want uh, your interactive key to be, uh, you can choose. So the kind of go to is generally the E key in most games. So there we go, changes that to the E key. OK, there's no need to save anything here. Uh, just close that down. OK, so we've got our E key ready to go. Um, <clears throat> my main content folder, again, all I've done is just make a new folder here. To do that, you right click and hit new folder. And then in that folder, I'm first of all going to create a blueprint and it's going to be an actor. Um, and again, whatever your, your resource is, um, I'm going to call mine mint as I did before. So I'm going around collecting mint for whatever reason for your recipes or something. Um, and what we also need is a user interface is a widget and that's going to be the um, the text that appears when i'm within a certain radius of the resource that says push e to interact or whatever you want it to say so the widget uh, the user widget and then uh, i'll call it uh, collect mint or something okay the names can be whatever makes sense to you so the actual actor itself we'll start with that i'm going to double click that I'm going to add a static mesh for the actual model of the object. So um, I happen to have some models in this project already. Again, you may have your own models here, um, whatever it is that you need to use for the mesh. Um, I think I've got a flower that I used before. There we go. OK, so a flower here. And what I also want to do is add a collision. So I'm going to add a box collision. There we go. And this collision is the radius that you want the character to be able to kind of move in to uh, be able to pick up this resource. So how close do you want them to be, essentially? Um, something like that. Maybe you'll be fine. Um, and that is, yeah, that's all you need there. So I'm going to go over to the event graph and get rid of the, uh, the default stuff. Um, now, what we're going to do is let's just go straight into it. So I'm going to select my box collision. I'm going to right click in here and I'm going to have uh, an event which is going to be on begin overlap. OK, so what do we want to overlap with? I'm going to cast to uh, a first person character because I'm using the first person template. Hook that up to other actor so that it restricts it to only being the first person character that can interact with this um, model. Um, and then I'm also going to have something for when I end the overlap, so when I'm no longer within that region anymore. OK, and I want the same thing. I'm going to Control C, Control V. Let's copy that. OK. 
that's great. And then what I want to do is I just want this to um, create a widget. So create widget. There we are. Which widget do I want it to create? This collect mint one that I've got there. Great. And then I want to add that to the viewport so that it becomes visible. Great. So when I begin overlapping, it's going to show this widget on the screen. Uh, of when I'm not in it, I want it to go away. So um, this one here, I don't need to create another one of those. I can go uh, remove, remove from parent. Yeah, not item from parent. And then let's connect these up there. And that should do that first bit. So let's just compile that. Uh, that target needs to go to there, sorry. And let's chuck one of these into the world. There we go. Let's run over and check this. So if I interact, come up with here, uh, I know what I haven't done. I haven't done anything on my widget. So let's go over to the widget. Now with widgets in Unreal 5, um, for some reason it doesn't have the, the canvas there immediately. Like if I zoom out, you see you can't see the border of what the screen would be uh, like with Unreal 4. So um, if you search for canvas, you can just drop one of those in there. Uh, and then you've got your canvas ready. And then I'm gonna just chuck in some text. All right, the text, again, this can say whatever you really want it to say. So I'm gonna say, um, press E to collect, but again, that can say whatever you like. I'm gonna move it over to the side of the screen. Make sure you anchor it. So I'm gonna anchor that to the center so um, that will position correctly on the screen. And then all of this is kind of up to you. So color, um, let's make it purpley pink, shall we? Um, make it a bit larger. So it's really clear, but all this stuff, you know, you can do, and I want an outline, there we go, something like that. So we'll say press E to collect, compile that. Let's try that again. There we go. So that's really, really easy. So it'll, it'll display that widget when I'm within uh, that collision area. And when I'm not, it won't say it anymore, okay? Uh, one thing I have noticed though here is that there are some collisions on this model. So what I'll do is just come over to uh, this guy here, come down to collisions. And while you've got presets, yeah, we don't want block or we want overlap all. Don't put no collisions because it won't be able to detect anything. You still want it to detect collision, but you want it to overlap. So overlap all is what you want there. Okay, that's great. So from here, um, we now want to be able to, you know, when we're within that area, we want to be able to push a key and it's going to allow us to select it. So we need a, a Boolean to say, you know, to, or to tell us that we are within that area. So <clears throat> let's gonna move these back. Um, and I'm going to create, do I want this here? No, I don't want that here. What I need to do is find my character blueprint. So first person character. Okay. And you can see I've already got this one here. So because obviously I did this before. So I'll delete that so that we're doing everything from scratch. So I'm gonna create a new variable one called mint, and that's going to be an integer. And this is the variable that's going to store the amount of the resource that I've collected. So if I just compile that, make sure that's default at zero. Um, I don't need you open anymore. And my mint one, I'm trying to think where I need the Boolean. I guess it needs to be here. So uh, I need to create a one called um, it in area okay 
So this is going to set in area to true. So when we begin overlapping, it's going to set that to true. When we end overlapping, it's going to set that back to false again. Great, OK. That should be fine. OK, so what we want to do now is we want to be able to push E to um, interact with the element. So um, still within the, the mint actor, we're going to um, type in interact. That's what I called um, my action event. So you can see action events here, interact. Remember we made that right at the beginning, whatever you called yours. And I need to add to that mint variable that I collected, which is in my first person character. So I'm going to need to cast to the first person character. Object is going to be get player character because it's a character. And uh, then we're going to set that mint variable or whatever you called your variable of course and it's going to be um, plus this is a difference as well from unreal engine 4 what i used to do is i used to put um, integer because that's what i was working with and then it would give me all the options for integer it doesn't have that anymore which is kind of annoying really but something to get used to um, so i just put plus and then it gives add okay and then uh, get whatever mint currently is and it's going to add one so every time i collect one it's going to add one to that number and again target needs to go to there okay that's fine what i'm also going to get it to do then is to print the string so that we can see that that is working so it's going to print whatever that value of mint is. Okay, because again, I'm, this could be tied to an inventory, like just a uh, HUD. That's kind of going to be down to you. Um, and then once I've collected it, it needs to destroy the actor. Okay, let's compile that. So here we go. So when we begin overlap, uh, with the character, it's going to set that boolean to true and show me the, view, the uh, viewport. Uh, when we end the overlap, it's going to um, set it to false and then remove that. Okie dokie. Um, kind of just thinking actually, I don't know if I'm going to need this boolean at all. Let's leave it there for now, <laughs> because we're going to do this on inputs rather than boolean actually. So essentially, um, let's just test this for now. I don't think it's going to do anything at the moment. So if I come up to it now, it still shows us press E to collect. If I press E, yeah, nothing is happening. So in our mint actor, essentially with an actor, um, sort of by default, the inputs are disabled. Okay, as opposed to your character, if you're on your character doing something, um, and you had your interact, you know, event, which is the E key, or you were uh, typed in uh, a key like like this way, this would work fine. In your character but in a normal actor by default it's not going to do anything uh, because you have to enable those inputs manually with a with an actor at least from my experience so um, which is why at the moment i push e and nothing is happening at all because technically you know i should be able to push e and it should be doing this but it's not because the inputs aren't enabled so i want when we are in here when we are beginning to overlap we're going to uh, yeah enable token spell 
enable input. And here is going to be disable input. And it's going to be to the player controller. And they can both hook up to the same one. Like that. So actually I don't need these, don't need those. Actually I can get rid of this in area. Boolean because I'm not going to be doing it by Boolean. Great. So let's just test that. Compile works. Let's push play. So if I push E, I'm just pushing E right now, nothing is happening. I can't see uh, my integer cocking up. Come over here, it says press E to collect. Push E and it's disappeared. And you probably hopefully saw that a one appeared there, but if I add some more, more of my mints, it doesn't really look like mint, I know. Chuck a few of them around here. There we go. So if I push E, you'll see it says one, come to click this one, two, three, four, five. And I've collected them all. Okay, so let's just quickly recap. So I made a widget which just says uh, press E to collect and I anchored it to the middle there. Uh, in the actor, I added the model and a box collision. And in the event, we've got begin overlap with the character, creates the widget, adds it to the viewport, and enables inputs. When we are outside, when we overlap, you know, leave that area again uh, with the character, it removes that widget and then disables the inputs again. So pushing E will do nothing. Okay. What pushing E does, which is this one, it will cast to my character, which is where the variable mint is stored. Okay. It will set, set that variable to plus one or whatever its current value is. Currently it's just printing it to the screen and then it will destroy that mint actor. Okay, but yeah, what you, you get from this, what you do with that variable is up to you. You could have it display like a, if you're going around collecting like a, a specific thing that you need to collect a specific amount of, you might want it to display to a, a widget, or you might want it to add to like an inventory that you can access through another key or whatever it is. But that's for, for another video for another time. But hopefully this was useful. And um, yeah, that's all for now.